everyone, welcome back to uh, sleeve day. Um, after you've constructed your bodice, if you are doing the tank top version, you would have went to um, our video section and went to the how to do a burrito roll method. There you would learn how to um, sew your sleeves up so they're perfectly encased inside the lining so you have no seams showing. Now, if you are adding sleeves, continue on in this video. So first we need to get our sleeve pieces out. We'll put that right there. And we have our bodice. So this is as far as we got for bodice construction. Um, here we are gonna go ahead and attach our sleeves. Now you can see that the sleeve is a different shape than the arm side, which is, it is supposed to be that way, so don't worry. When I cut my sleeves, uh, this is on the fold right here. Uh, I always make like a little triangle right there. That way I know that is the center of my sleeve. So I have my main fabric and my line fa lining fabric right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my sleeve and flip it over to match up my center of my sleeve to the uh, shoulder seam right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin that in place. And I'm pinning through both layers. We're gonna sew through both of the layers. Then I take each edge, I'll take this edge, and I'm gonna go ahead and pin it right here so the edges match up on each side. Okay, now you can see it's kind of, you know, it's starting to kind of look like it could fit in there. What we're gonna do now is I start from the top and I do like two, maybe three pins, depending on how close you pin together. So I'll do two. I'll pin to about right here. And then from here down, I just like to uh, make sure that this is where we're gonna ease the sleeve in, is kind of in this dip on the sleeve. Just go ahead and kind of pull it, line it up so all the raw edges are matching and finish pinning down. Okay, once you have this all pinned, you'll go ahead and sew or serge around the armhole uh, curve. So go ahead into your serger or sewing machine and do that. Okay, you can see here, I went ahead and serged around the armhole. And if we flip it this way, you can kind of start to see the sleeve coming together. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process on the other side. Okay, I have my sleeves attached on both sides. Now we need to go ahead and sew our side seams together along with our um, inseam of our sleeves. So to do this, we are just going to take our back piece and flip it down, just like that. And we will go ahead and pin, sorry, I forgot my pins, um, pin your sleeve seam right here. And I like to push my seams down right there. Go ahead and match up the edges. And you're gonna pin through all four layers right here as well. And we will sew and serge down this side seam. So now that I'm all pinned, I'm just gonna head over to my serger and I'm gonna serge right down here. If you don't have a serger, you can go ahead and use um, a zigzag stitch or a triple stretch stitch. This is also one of them seams that you must use the, a stretch stitch on. So I'll be right back. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and get ready to hem our sleeves. Now if you want, you can serge along the raw edge here. Um, and fold it up a half inch or a quarter of inch plus a quarter of an inch, whichever one you prefer. Me, I like to do just a half inch fold. It keeps the bulk um, a little less along your sleeves. And um, to help keep it laying flat and add a little bit of stability, I love using steam -a seam This is my go-to for nearly everything. This is one quarter inch steam -a seam uh, I use it for bodices, sleeves, skirts, everything. So uh, you if you have a lot of our patterns, you'll see that this is uh, mentioned very often. So one side, it's a double-sided fusible. One, uh, it's sticky 
And then this side has the wax paper so you can actually iron it on without ruining your iron. So I'm just gonna kinda lay it here. It's not sticky enough to completely hold itself in place, especially along the curves, but you can kinda see it's, it's kinda sticking there. So I'm just gonna go uh, press this in place, um, just a couple seconds is all it takes to adhere it. And I'm trying not to get too close to this edge right here because I don't want to get the steam seam on my beautiful Cricut um, pressing mat. This is the large pressing mat. I use it all the time. It is so handy. And it is actually uh, durable enough that it won't even affect my cutting mat underneath because normally ironing on top of a cutting mat is like a big no-no. But I don't even have to worry because there is absolutely no heat coming through the back of this. Okay, so now you can go ahead and flip this over and continue putting your, I'm trying to make this so you guys can see it. Continue putting the steam seam as close to the edge as you uh, comfortably can. Because remember, we only have a half inch seam allowance. And if you are going to go ahead and do the quarter of an inch fold press and then another quarter of an inch um, fold, uh, then you definitely want to make sure that this is all the way at the edge. I'm leaving a little bit just because you know, I can right now because I'm only doing the half inch. So now I'm just going to go ahead and press all this in place. Steam a seam is definitely a lot easier to remove while it's still warm. You want to give it a few seconds to cool down, but you, once it's completely cool, um, this wax paper can rip. And if you're doing a big project, like a big circle skirt, that can get a little tedious on um, peeling all the paper off. So I peeled the wax paper off of the steam seam and you can see it's clear. So now all I'm gonna do is take my sleeve hem and fold it up. If you're not comfortable doing your whole entire sleeve um, hem in one press, you'll only wanna remove half of the wax paper so if you just wanted to do this side, you would remove it here and just kind of tear it right there and then press your hem up and then do the other side. But I do mine all in one shot, so kind of got that. And it still has just a slight stick and it does help keep everything in place. If you don't have steam a seam, um, you can just fold it up and press it and take it to your machine and sew as well. It's not necessary, but it does make things a lot easier. Okay, I think I'm liking that. I'm gonna pull this side down just a little bit right there. Okay, that looks good to me. I have it folded both sides the way that I want. I'm just give it a press for, I don't know, like five seconds. I actually am not 100% sure what the time recommendations are for it because I threw the box away a long time ago. And it comes with two of these spools, just so you know. Uh, I'll link this in the description, actually, so you guys can check it out. Uh, it comes in quarter inch and a half inch. I have both of them. I use the quarter inch the most, though. Okay, so now that this is ready, I'm going to go ahead to my sewing machine, and I am going to top stitch this with a stretch stitch um, about three-eighths of an inch from the edge. So I'll be right back. Okay. You can see here, I've already hemmed my sleeves. We can go ahead and turn it right side out so you can see what it looks like. Now your bodice is fully constructed and look at how adorable that is. So if you added sleeves, um, this is what it will look like. If you did the short sleeves, there's other sleeve uh, variations in the pattern as well. We also have our tank top version right here, and I actually did two tank tops. This one is the cutout back, if you remember from the other videos, and this is the square back. This uses the burrito method, um, and that's in a previous video, so you can check that out if you decide to attempt a tank top. It's really easy, and our, of course, our super easy sleeves. Now you can continue on to the skirt. Thank you so much for watching our sew along video on the Skylar pattern. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel while you're here. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Simple Life Patterns, and you can shop our website at thesimplelifecompany.com.